Srila Prabhupada says that Lord Buddha is Lord Krishna's avatar and he exhibited extraordinary qualities of compassion and renunciation. He appeared in the beginning of Kali Yuga as the son of Anjana. And today, His Holiness Bhakti Digna Vinasa Narasimha Swami will be enlightening us about Lord Buddha Avatar. Hare Krishna. Yes, so as we heard, Lord Buddha appeared at the beginning of the Kali Yuga. And he's an avatar of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he's mentioned in the list of avatars in the first canto of the third chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam where Sutta Goswami is mentioning the different incarnations of the Lord. And Jayadeva Goswami has also included Lord Buddha in the Dasavatar Stotra, which is a part of the Gita Govinda. So Lord Buddha has a, a very prominent place in society. He's very much honored and respected Everyone knows of him, they've heard of him. Not everybody always understands what is the actual teachings of the Buddha. It's sometimes difficult trying to approach Buddhist people because they will not accept Buddha as an incarnation of God. They will say Buddha is not God and he's not man. He is Buddha. This is one of the problems which you have when you try to preach to Buddhist people. Prabhupada makes, Srila Prabhupada makes the point that the teachings of Lord Buddha are meant to bring the people to, the, to a pr primary qualification to become God conscious, to help them to begin God consciousness by getting them to give up animal slaughter which was the real purpose of the appearance of Lord Buddha. He, because prior to the appearance of Lord Buddha, there was so much corruption and degradation among the Brahminical order, and everywhere people were slaughtering animals in the name of Vedic sacrifice. So it was Lord Buddha who came, who led the people away from the, this Veda, this uh, so-called Vedic injunctions, which were allowing them to sacrifice animals. The people everywhere had become addicted to animal flesh and the whole place was like a slaughterhouse. So it was a very critical situation. And it was at this time Lord Buddha appeared and he led the people away from the Vedas. And by leading them away from the Vedas, got them to give up this animal slaughter. And they also gave up the direction of the, the Brahmanas because the Brahmanas had become corrupted and degraded. They were not giving proper direction. They were simply encouraging the people in animal slaughter in the name of Vedic sacrifice. So that kind of behavior of Vedic sacrifice, this is for the less intelligent people. And Lord Buddha came to teach people ahimsa, non-violence, to get them to give up this violence. Because so long as people are killing animals, then there's no hope for their progress in spiritual realization. They can never become God conscious so long as they're killing animals. So Lord Buddha did a wonderful service in this respect that he taught people moral principles and he got them to give up animal sacrifice. He got them to embrace the principles of ahimsa, nonviolence. And this set the stage later on 
Shankaracharya could come and he could bring back the Vedas. And then after Shankaracharya, then you have the Vaishnava Acharyas coming. And finally, Lord Chaitanya coming to give the essence of all the Vedas. So Lord Buddha, we said he's an incarnation of God. And from the Bhagavad Gita, we know Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. I am the author, I am the compiler of the Vedas. So Lord Buddha had to, he was bringing the message of the Vedas, but doing it in a camouflaged way, in an in a unusual manner. He didn't present himself as God. He just taught the people nonviolence, don't kill, be peaceful, control the mind. We agree with some aspects of the Buddhist philosophy. For example, Buddha teaches material world is a place of suffering. We have that, we agree with that from Bhagavad Gita. So in Buddhism also, the cause of suffering is due to desire. So we can go along with that, we accept that. And then the Buddhists have their process of purifying desire so that they can become uh, peaceful and sense controlled. Now, of course, ultimately their goal, most Buddhists are thinking they want to become Buddha. We encourage them to understand, don't try to become Buddha, you be a, a servant of the Buddha. Srila Prabhupada also makes the point that it's good that people are embracing Buddhism and taking an interest in Buddhism, but he said it, it won't do any good unless they close the slaughterhouses. So long as they're killing animals, then it is no, no good in the teaching of Buddhist culture. They're professing Buddhist philosophy, but at the same time killing animals. You cannot do it. Lord Buddha came to teach nonviolence. And we want to encourage this, of course, it's a very important basic principle for spiritual realization. Hare Krishna. Oh, thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Mara has a quick question, someone asking from the public, if you can tell us. Uh, someone is asking um, uh, uh, if Lord Buddha is a prophet or is an incarnation of, of, of the Lord, uh, who is actually uh, Lord Buddha? Well, we explained according to the Vedic tradition, He's an incarnation of the Lord. He's a Shaktyavesha avatar. He's an empowered personality who did tremendous good for the world by teaching nonviolence and stopping the animal slaughter, which was going on in the name of Vedic sacrifice. So this was the contribution of Lord Buddha. He's an avatar of the Lord. He's in the Das Avatar Stotra. He's in the, third, the first canto of the third chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. So he's described in that way. But the Buddhists will never accept that. You cannot present that kind of knowledge to Buddhist people. They won't accept Vedas. So as I said, they say Buddha is not man and he's not God. Buddhists don't believe in God. It's an atheistic philosophy. So they don't believe in God. They don't, and they say Buddha is not man, he's Buddha. And ultimately, their goal in practicing Buddhism is to become also a Buddha. Uh, thank you very much, Maharaj. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, His Holiness uh, Bhakti Digna Vinas Narasim Haswami Maharaj. I didn't have the time even to introduce you properly. Maharaj is a, a spiritual master and is con guru and sannyasi and, and GBC and uh, is preaching uh, and traveling around uh, Malaysia, China, Thailand, India, and many other places in the world. Mayapur. Uh, Mayapur, yes. At the moment, Maharaj is here with us in Mayapur. And it's especially, I am grateful because he very much dedicated to teach uh, Bhakti Shastri and to train uh, in the higher level of education 
uh, the devotees, thank you, Maharaj, for your great service for this uh, movement. <laughs> 